Ink Mage here with an unboxing from WizKids. I've never done an unboxing video, so I thought I'd do one. So what is inside is a brick of Pathfinder Battles City of Lost Omens. And a brick, if you don't know, is eight booster packs. So look at that. This has some pretty nice minis in the series, so I'm excited to see what I get. I've been especially looking forward to the, the town guards because you can never have enough of those for your game. And plus, I really like how uniform they look, and it's really cool. So there's some other goodies in here that I didn't expect that they sent that I'm very excited just to check out. Oh, this is cool. We've got some knoll... A knoll and a knoll flesh gnar, gnawer, someone who gnaws. That's kind of a difficult thing to say. Say that three times fast. And orc adventurers. All right, cool. This is a raging troll. You know, he, he's got to get into some therapy. He's got to get that the, the rage rhino off his back. Feed his anger monkey a banana. We have, oh, this is great, an ogre zombie. I wanna look, we wanna take a closer look later to see what makes him a zombie as opposed to just a regular ogre. I mean, you could use him, I'm imagining, as an ogre zombie or a zo an ogre that has taken some grievous wounds, maybe to use as a threat against lower level characters. So maybe, you know, as opposed to 59 hit points, which I believe is what the Monster Manual says for ogres, maybe he only has like 25 hit points. That, you know, that could he, he hits hard, but it would make a great threat for like a second level group of characters or even maybe even first. Okay, this one's pretty cool. I haven't seen this one yet, so I want to hold that out. All right, we have Tiefling Sorcerers. Ooh, a Manticore. Manticore is pretty cool. And I kind of like that he's got like an angry, like almost human like face. It makes it kind of fun and funny. Oh, all right, a cloaker. Check that out. That is a very cool mini. Oh, this is fantastic. I don't think I have one of these demons. So this is uh, Nelfeshni, I suppose that's how it's pronounced. But I remember these guys going all the way back to AD&D. Yes, I'm that old. And a bone naga. That's pretty cool. I have an old bone naga from the original line of D&D minis, the plastic pre-painted ones in the early 2000s. But I have to say, this one looks even cooler. Uh, you know, because this one, the way it looks, and I get a little look there, you can see it almost looks like it could also be like a, just a giant skeletal King Cobra or something like that. So, you know, I've been dying to do a snake cult themed adventure campaign at some point. So I know that's gonna get use. So this is a Venom Troll, and the Venom Trolls are just hideous. Now, I'll turn that around so maybe that image is better. You can see these things are just bloated, hideous abominations. And then a Griffin. One of the cool things that WizKids has been doing with their Nolzers line, their, their, their painted and unpainted, is they have, and I'm just going to tear this open right now just to, just to illustrate this point. I gotta get to it to show you. Um, one of the cool things is they've been, all right, this sucker is rubber banded in because it, nobody, you know, you don't want anybody shoplifting that. <laughs> so these thick bases for flying stands, because some of the other ones where you had to put them in and then they, they, they often broke, they've really nailed it for their flying stands now to, to create the minis that are flying. They're, they're definitely solid. And then, I have not seen this one. I didn't. I, I did not see this one at all around. This one is really fantastic. So this is from the Wiz Kids Nolzers Marvelous Miniatures line. This is a giant ape. Look at that sucker. I mean, may not be King Kong size, but Mighty Joe Young. I think so. Right now, let's take a look at the City of Lost Omens and what we have in store. So I'm gonna open up the first box. They've got a lot of cool minis here. Let's see. Let's see what we got. All right, so the first one is this 
Oh, it looks like an Ankylosaurus, but they say it's a Pinocosaurus. Can anybody tell me, is that a real dinosaur from one of the, one of the dinosaur ages? I don't know, but this is really good, particularly if you are planning on running or are running or in the middle of running uh, Tomb of Annihilation where the land has Thunder Beasts, AKA dinosaurs. So that is the large mini that came with this first pack. And let's toss that aside for a second and let's see what's next. Looks like, I don't know what it looks like. It's a, can you see through that? I can't see through that. Oh, so this is great. This is a Durgar Bombardier. And you know what? These guys are great enemies. If you ever have a campaign that is within the depths of a mountain, an old Dwarven stronghold that was taken over, or maybe you are doing an Underdark campaign, these guys can find a way into your campaign. I'm so glad to have uh, a Durgar, anything. Let's see, what's next? Okay, this is an Eruxi Stargazer. This looks like some sort of frosty lizard creature. Maybe he's tropical with that blue, but I mean, this guy could certainly, I, I don't, I'm not, it's been a while since I played Pathfinder, so I don't know what the monsters are. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, be, I think there was like, what, at least five bestiaries for the, for the uh, first edition Pathfinder, so I don't know, these must be for the second edition Pathfinder. Since I don't play that, what I would most likely use this for is some sort of lizard folk or troglodyte, uh, maybe a lizard folk monk. He's got, his hands are wrapped there, so he looks like he could be a brawler. Maybe he's a drunken master. All right. <clears throat> so there's, in these booster packs, there are four minis per pack. So let's see. Ooh, this is a good one. This is uh, a low Alanti. So Alanti are people from this lost uh, land that I think resurfaced in some uh, adventure path, path from Pathfinder. So this is sort of this... You know, and I think at Atlante, it's like, right, Atlantis, so this lost civilization. So this is like a really cool figure. You could use this, you know, in a lot of your seagoing campaigns. This could be a great mini for for Ghosts of Saltmarsh, or if you if you do, I mean, I did run Skull and Shackle uh, campaign for Pathfinder. You could find use for, for it there. Or how about this, a gladiator using a trident in the arena. It's a, again, this is just a very cool miniature to have. Okay, we're going to box two. Let's see what we got. Try not to look as I go. <clears throat> All right. Oh, this is pretty cool. So sometimes maybe you want to have your characters go to the Feywild or maybe use some of the player options. I think in Ravnica, right, you can play a centaur or even in Mythic Odyssey of Theros or whatever the new uh, the new Greek style themed fifth edition adventure book campaign setting. All right, I'm trying to talk and look at how cool this mini is, mini is at the same time. And while I can walk and chew gum, apparently I can't get my thoughts straight and admire this miniature and I, I like that the faces on these paint jobs, I don't know how close we can get, but the faces are like detailed. They're really, WizKids has really been stepping up their game this way uh, with, with their minis. All right, this is pretty cool. Now I know they call it a Tengu Rogue because that's what it is in Pathfinder, Tengu, but this is, you know, essentially it's your Kenku. So this guy could be a great Kenku Rogue. He could be a Kenku Monk. Just a, a really cool mini. I love that he's got a hood and a scarf for flair. He's got a little flair going. He's he's uh, he's got something to say about his fashion. He's not just willing to be relegated to just be this uh, this thieving magpie. He he's also making a fashion statement. I can get behind that. All right, what do we got? Looks like another Durgar. This is the Durgar sharpshooter, and she looks kind of like a, a bit of a badass. She's got chainmail and you know, chain shirt over top, some boiled leather and a crossbow. This one is really, this was a, this is a good one. It's a changeling exile. So apparently this is the humanoid or human form of this changeling exile. What this mini would really be good for as well, if you didn't want to use it as a changeling exile is, this could be a druid. 
has a little hand scythe and a staff, or even like a barbarian. Oh, so this is really cool. I I'm not even gonna bother uh, doing the others right yet. So Durgar, if you're not aware of, have this ability to enlarge themselves. And this is an enlarged Durgar. I have some of the old D&D ones. I have a couple of the Pathfinder, or I mean, uh, I should say Reaper ones. This one is the first female one I've seen. And again, just a really cool mini with the double dwarvish axes and just really good design. I got, I'm getting old, so I gotta like do this to look up. Man, the detail on the face, the eyes, the eyebrows, the lip, the lipstick even, or, or you know, coloring. It's just, that is a really nice mini. A nice one to add to the arsenal. You know, and if you don't wanna use Durga in your campaign, you could always paint this over completely gray like granite and then dry brush it a little bit lighter. And this could be like a statue of an ancient dwarvish hero. It's another option. All right. I don't know how I felt about this one. I think it is a really good mini. This was one I hoped to get. It is a harpy. All right. So this one's kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of neat. I don't have a lot of creatures like this. Um, it is called Leafy Lesh uh, Leaf Fleshy. And I don't know if that is a second edition monster or an NPC in an adventure path, but it's this little plant-based creature, you know, living that vegan lifestyle. <laughs> uh, oh, yes. This one is very cool. The Angelkin Redeemer. So particularly if you are playing in 5e, this could be used as an asimer. What a really cool fighter or Paladin, just got this metallic hair and a stern gaze and just a really striking pose. I, I think I think she is a fantastic mini. Okay, we're almost halfway done. Let's see, let's toss that. You know, just to show you how durable Monster Fight Club stuff is, I just tossed it and it just bounced right off their tree and Rocky Hill stuff. <laughs> That's so good. <clears throat> All right, let me empty these small ones out. Okay, so this is a Kruth. Maybe you're running a desert campaign or maybe you're running Dark Sun and you need creatures other than horses because they don't use horses as a mount to pull carts. This could be one of those or maybe this is just something laying around uh, waiting in the sand to come out and attack. I don't know, I'm not familiar with these these creatures, but they could be, you know, looking at it, I would use it in a desert. I could even use it in a marsh. I could use it in an arena. They're, you know, you just find reasons. What's interesting though is, check out the articulation on his hands. Like he's up to something. Like he can pick your pocket, so I'd be careful. Steal all your minis with that hand. All right, what do we got here? Okay, this is, so, oh, the cat folk pouncer. All right. Now this is a, a really cool mini, particularly if you like Catfolk or Tabaxi. And at one point I would like to run the camp, a campaign for monarchies and Mao where they are Catfolk. So this will get a lot of use. Now this says Pouncer. So I think that makes probably good sense because he, uh, he or she can't tell. Maybe it's unisex could be a barbarian and just pounce on you and put that ax in your skull. Or maybe it's just to dice uh, their eggs that they like to eat. I don't know. That's the glorious thing about D&D. &D. You can take and make the game whatever you want. You can have the classes and races and whatever. They can be whatever you want to suit your campaign, suit your tables and, and your players. So that is, and, and these minis uh, by WizKids, whether the Unpainted Nullzars or their Pathfinder Battles Unpainted line or the Pathfinder Battles, or just the D&D ones are really, really just handy in getting done what you need to get done. Okay, now my sons are gonna be totally jealous about this. This is Chief Zusgut, and he's a goblin king. Look at that. He's wearing finery. Maybe he took that fire. Maybe the goblins kidnapped some nobles and 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 took the sons, the child's clothed, noble clothing, and put it on, but that's a crown. That what a what an awesome crown. That's not even like one of those kind of poofy ones that like Henry VIII may have worn. This is like this one. This sits on your head. You know your king or chief. He's pretty awesome. And he's got some, 
He's got a big smile. I'd be smiling too if I had that finery and uh, crown. Now, this is one of the ones I really wanted. Let me just get a better look here. This is the Absalom Watch Cadet. And just give you an idea, these, it would be a blast to have just an arsenal of these. I mean, a ton of these so that when you need uh, your town watch, invariably, you know, when players, you know, beat up a <laughs> beat up a shopkeep because he won't sell for the price they want. I can't tell you how many times in my campaign my players have have like just thought that like uh, town watch were like disposable. And it's like, oh, it doesn't matter. They were trying to stop us. Yes, yes, they were trying to arrest you because in my Curse of Strahd game, players they burned down the coffin maker's place. They burned it down. There were witnesses, and then when they came to arrest them, they were like, "Oh no, we're not going." And then they they fought back. It was pretty funny. Uh, so I it was it was like always a, a thing that they were that they the one character who burning hands a bunch of guards was uh, was was labeled and branded as a murderer in Velaki. <laughs> but anyway, kind of kind of drifted off there. But this is a really awesome town watch one, and very different than anyone that I've seen produced in anywhere. So I hope to get more of those because that is one that is going to be used. Now, of course, this says cadet. So this is maybe a, a town watchman in training. <clears throat> All right. Again, there's the mythic odyssey or the odyssey, odyssey, mythic adventures, whatever of Theros coming out uh, that just came out right for D&D. Uh, &D. You're going to want some minotaurs. You're going to want some of these mythic creatures like minotaurs and centaurs for that game. This is uh, double fisted, uh, double axed minotaur, double bladed, double fisted, and he's got red eyes again, a brass ring in his nose, lots of detail here. This is this is not just a uh, shoddy paint job. It looks really, really good. Table ready for sure. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, see, ask and you shall receive. So I, this is another uh, Absalom cadet, watch cadet. So this is really cool. I, you know what? I like these for more of a metropolitan, like if you're running a city game, these are the guards in a city rather than a rustic village or town. And this one is really interesting. This must be something in one of the adventure paths or, or I, I imagine for Pathfinder, this is the, um, it's some sort of murder orb. I, I, I don't think there's anything written on here, but this is just a great set piece. Look at that. That is pretty gnarly and nasty and and you can come up with some horrifying uses for that to uh, frighten your players okay and then looks like okay so this is interesting so this is an Absalom watch cadet now similar pose similar everything but this one is a half orc and I like that I like the variety that you get you know, because I could put two of these people out and then I got to remember who's who when when uh, there's a there's a tussle or something. But now I've got some different uh, some different ones to uh, for the players to to be able to know which one is which. I just I like I like the variety offers versatility. Maybe you're playing a human or a half work fighter that um, in your downtime you're doing work for the for the town watch or city watch. There you go. Now you got some minis to, to use. Okay, on to the next one. <clears throat> okay, this is, oh, this is, a, so here's one of their set dressing pieces. And it, you've got a plinth with a crystal formation. Lots of uses I could think for this. You know, this could be, it could be a sculpture from Dragon Shards in Eberron. And maybe it, or maybe it's in, in a dungeon room. And when the players use it, or if they go over and they touch it during battle or something, it recharges one of their spell slots or or gives them uh, the instant use of a healing surge, something cool like that. Throwing little things like that in that have effects like that affect the battle in a good way. And it also allows you as a DM to throw harder stuff at them if you're able to like kind of offset that by uh, giving them a little bit of a, a little help. <clears throat> okay, so this one is a Gimmerling and it's like this little undead kid. Now, I don't know what a Gimmerling is. Again, for the third or fourth time, I'm not doing Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just, my group is doing 5e. I could, I would use this as a child vampire spawn or a child zombie. I don't have any child zombies. This is really a great mini and will get a lot of use at my table, uh, especially putting uh, my players in, you know, tough situations where they have 
to make moral decisions. They see a little kid coming at them and maybe the kid looks wounded and is trying to get help, but instead it's a zombie going to going for their jugular. All right. This is a Duskwalker Ghost Hunter. Now, I'm not sure what that is, but the coloring and hair color is very similar to a Half-Orc Barbarian Mini that I have from the old line of D&D Minis. And so, I, I mean, I could easily use this as a Half-Orc Barbarian. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty cool mini. I like this one a lot. Again, it's, it's something different. I haven't seen this one before, so I like having variety. Variety is outstanding uh, to drop things on your table. Okay, this is an Aruxi Defender. So again, one of these lizard folk type creatures, I'm not quite sure. So for me, I would end up using these with troglodytes or lizard folk. And this guy has got a lot of great detail. I mean, if, and if you can see that shield, it's like made from like wood. It's like all bound with like rope and it's got designs on it. That's just a really, really nice mini. I like that one a lot. Okay, we're getting down to it. It's gonna be a long video, I know. I hope you stuck it out with me. All right, I was hoping for this one. <laughs> Again, uh, Wave Rider. This one is a little situational, but which means you may not use it as much. But when you need something like this, if you don't have it, what are you gonna use to simulate it? So this is a really good one. I'll put it down here on the water, and you can see, so it's like, oh, look at it, it's skimming along the water. Mm. Right. I think that's the, that's you gotta admit that's a pretty good seahorse impression. So that's looks like a sea elf riding a seahorse. All right, let's see what else we got. So it's another one. Of, oh, so this is a Zuglith warrior. All right, now this definitely to me looks like a troglodyte. At least the troglodytes I have. It's probably what I would use it for in a pinch. I could use it as as a lizard folk. But um, just a cool mini. It looks like he's got javelins in uh, on his back, and he's got a gnarly club. You don't want to be hit with that club. That would that that wouldn't be pleasant. That's not fun for anybody. Well, maybe it'd be fun for him. Ah, this is one that I wanted. It's a Dampier wizard. Now I'm not all about playing like the half vampire, whatever. You know, like it's a little dark. But this guy is a great villain. I'd say he is a great mid-level villain to throw at your campaign. He's got lots of like detail and yeah, an intense gaze. Look at that, that's some sort of like staff. Maybe this is the object of his power for your mid-level campaign. Maybe that campaign wraps up around seventh level and maybe, you know, maybe you're dealing with him from like fourth to seventh or eighth level you've only heard about them earlier but then you come face to face with them and culminating in your leveling up to ninth level in time for another villain of greater power maybe his master okay this is a aradin so i'm looking at this this guy has a sort of a um, asian or mongolian look and uh, with his face, and he's got some interesting garb. Again, this is really, I like this sort of thing because, you know, your players can travel to different lands, or maybe he's a traveler from a faraway land, you know, or maybe this is what people look like where you normally campaign, and, and uh, you know, it's just, I like the variety. I like that you can have a figure like this. I, back in ad and I remember bringing in a, a samurai character from the Oriental Adventures book uh, to our medieval style game and I didn't have we didn't actually we didn't use a lot of minis but I certainly didn't have any minis that I could have used so that is really cool to have and now here we are we're down to the last the last one whoa what just popped oh would you look at that <clears throat> what a pluck this is the Large Green Dragon. Now I know some people aren't happy with Pathfinder ones because they've got this horn that makes them look like a blue dragon, but maybe, just maybe, well not all dragons have to look the same, but maybe somewhere in this dragon's lineage is a blue dragon. Who's to say they couldn't have uh, cross-bred uh, at some point? And so maybe you surprise your players, and, and every time it re, the, the breath weapon recharges, it's either lightning or the poisonous gas cloud. I mean, you don't know. this. You can create all sorts of things. This is just a really cool pose. The detail 
the leathery wings and hide. Where I mean, I'm just seeing from this and the Eberron line of minis, I'm just seeing a level of detail that is really been above and beyond what I've seen in the past. And there have been some great stuff in the past too, so that's saying something. Let's look at this. What do we got? Oh, this is really awesome. This is the Rat Folk Grenadier. So he's, you know, he's a little, he's, he's got his uh, little hand crossbow and a grenade here, a bomb. What a great mini if you are playing a Rat Folk or a Were Rat character. Or just, you know what? This guy isn't just good enough to be, you know, a random monster. This is, if he's not a player character, he's an NPC, a reoccurring NPC. And I like that he's on a small base. I like that he's small, you know, rather than medium. This is just, this is tremendous. In fact, I mean, this is really, to give you a, give you a size, I mean, like next to a human or a human and or humanoid, have or whatever, got here. And this is opposed to like a small kid. I mean, so this is like really like what halfling size should be like. They're very tiny. They can dart between, you know, the, someone's legs. All right. I'm going to pull this one out because I've seen what it is. It's the second one I've drawn. Um, and that's okay because what I might do with this one, since I have two of these, is paint this one over and make this a statue. What a heroic looking statue that would be. Wouldn't it? Maybe someone plays this character, and then at the end of the campaign, I surprise them after their heroic deeds are done, and they've constructed a statue of her. How cool would that be? As a player, I would, that would be a blast, I think. And then, oh yes, this, this was one of the ones on my wish list. This is the Knight of the Aeon Star, and it is this red-haired uh, warrior holding her helm, and she has in her hand a blade of, looks like, magical energy. This isn't a first level character, mind you. This is, this is a later character with a powerful magic item. Well, although it could be an eldritch knight using green flame uh, blade. Green flame, right? I mean, it could be that. So <clears throat> here are the minis. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm pretty thrilled with all the ones that are here. Uh, I thank WizKids, not just for sending them to me, but for making them. What a great addition to your games and the games you play. I'll post, I'll post stuff later for these other ones. Really, you'll see me post as I, as I paint them up. I'm a slow painter, but they'll, but they'll get done. But I do want to just kind of pull this one out just because I, at some point, I've got a bunch of, uh, Apes, flying apes, the ape king from uh, Legends of Galarian, Pathfinder minis that WizKids did, and this one has got to make it in there. Look at that. And here, let's put it right up on top of this rocky area, and let's show you what a warrior looks like next to it. I don't want to put one high up. Look at that. They're in deep doo-doo, except that she is, ah, fallen. So now she needs her, her stalwart ally the Eldritch Knight, all right? So, so that's it. That's the Pathfinder Battle, City of Lost Omens. Go pick up at least a booster pack, but you know, you can, you can definitely uh, fill out your minis collection and including your guards and your monsters by getting more. I, I totally recommend them. Anybody who knows me online or personally knows it like minis like you know i've never used drugs in my life but like minis are like crack to me you know it's like like oh man i need my fix so <laughs> anyway hope you enjoyed this and if you did please make sure to like and share and whatever